Hey guys, and welcome to episode one of Create Above and Beyond. I am so, so excited to start this series. So this is a 1.16 Minecraft mod pack, very different from Divine Journey, which we just finished on the channel here. So we got some basic tools. Let's do some exploring just to see what we can find around us. And I think for this series, we're gonna do an underground base. Not something I normally do, so this will come with some extra challenges, I think. Oh no, 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 not this time. Some kelp, we're gonna need this for later on. Let's not drown in the process. <laughs> It is also getting dark. Uh, I do see some shelter over there. Let's go check that out. Oh, and a mine shaft. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think this is game over. All mistakes were made. Hide. <laughs> Maybe we got a little bit too ambitious going down there right now. Let's see if we can find somewhere to call our base. Alright, I found us a really cool spot for a base location. Let's see if we can upgrade some of our tools. So we do have Tinker's Construct in this pack. Is the pattern recipe default? It is, okay. <laughs> so I believe Tinker's has changed since 1.12. I've never played with the new version of Tinker's Construct. But I know that we do need a crafting station, a Tinker station, the part builder, and we'll get the part chest here as well. Okay, this part builder seems to be a bit different from what I remember, but I guess we'll start out as always with a stone pickaxe. Alright, so there is a quest book in this mod pack. It's not quite so linear as Divine Journey was, so we have a bit more freedom in the ways we want to progress. So I think there's only four or maybe five chapters to this quest book, and about 50 inventions lie between us and the moon, which is our primary objective of this mod pack. But we're gonna have a lot of fun before we get there. <laughs> Alright, so I have a few goals I'd like to get for this episode. It might be a bit ambitious, but I'd like to automate a tree farm, or processing, and also get us some tools and some food. Oh, what is this thing? Some cogwheels, a millstone. Oh, this is good, actually. Yeah, we're gonna need this stuff for the Create automations. So for those of you who are not so familiar with Create, that's okay, we're gonna try and explain things as much as we can as we go here. I will admit, though, I am a newbie myself at Create. I've never played a pack with it before, but I am really looking forward to what we can do with this mod. There is also applied energistics in here. There's a uh, occultism. There is also some interesting building mods in this pack as well. I've got some ideas for our base, but it's gonna take a while for us to build that. First though, we should focus on our first objective. And to do that, we're gonna need a lot of andesite, which is crucial in a lot of the crate recipes. Oh, what is this stuff? Zinc ore? I guess we can't mine that yet. There's copper here as well. I'm sure this will come in handy. Mainly though, right now we need some iron. Although, as you can see, we're only getting crushed iron. Yeah, all these words are giving us the crushed version, which we then have to process. And there's a few different ways we can process this, not all of which we have access to yet. There is also thermal expansion in this, but this is way, way later we get access to this stuff. So under the metallurgy tab of the quest book, this tells us how to process all of our ores. So first step is to mine, that gives us the crushed. Then from there, we have five options, I guess. If we smelt this, we get three nuggets from the crushed. However, if we mill it, we can get three crushed dust. Then we can smelt that one to one, or we can wash it one to two. And we got our first blue shiny. Let's see how many we get. Five? That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Some Certus Quartz from Applied Energistics. Oh, I like the new texture, actually. Yeah, that's really cool. So one of the other materials we're going to need in bulk here to begin with is a lot of clay. There seems to be quite a bit scattered around this shoreline, so I'm going to gather up most of this. I don't really want to destroy up this river too much, but um, yeah, most of this stuff is going to get terraformed anyway. This is going to be completely different by the time we're finished with it. I'm not sure if we also need sand. I'm going to assume we do, so I'll pick up some of this as well. Oh, I do miss Vein Miner though. <laughs> I 
All right, that should be a good enough amount of clay for us to get started. And this is also where all of our kelp comes into this, so I've been harvesting this every now and then. Eventually, all this stuff we're going to have automated pretty soon, but to get us started, we have to do this manually. So we're going to combine our kelp along with our clay to get algal blend, which we then, I think, have to smelt. Very good, this will give us our algal bricks. So with all of these bricks, we have to combine this with the andesite. This gives us andesite alloy. So all of this andesite alloy is used in pretty much all of the create recipes and is one of the first things we're going to want to automate here. So I have also been doing a bunch of mining. Most of the stuff is in this barrel, but uh, yeah, we have some more resources in these chests. And luckily we did pick up some things that we can use here for to set up our ore processing. We already have the millstone, which is one of the most important parts of this. All right, there's almost two stacks of andesite alloy. The first thing we're going to want to make is the mechanical press though which does require the smithing table. And then we'll need a block of iron and also andesite machines. So these machines take casings, which is the andesite alloy and wood, it looks like. And I think we'll start off with 24 of these andesite casings. Then to get our machines, we have to combine that with kinetic mechanisms. And to make these, we'll need an iron saw, some cog wheels. And I think we just combine this together with some wood and the alloy. And we have our kinetic mechanisms. We're just going to batch craft as many as we can here. Then combine these with the andesite casings, and we get our machines. Oh man, the inventory is a mess here. <laughs> yeah, we have to sort this out. Soon though, soon. Alright, after smelting up some iron, we can grab the mechanical press. So this mechanical press is going to require some power. And I think for the time being, we'll just use the hand crank. So I've also made this depot, which we have to put our ingots on. I don't know if we can do multiple at a time. But I think if we put some gold on there, crank the hand crank. Yeah, nice, we get gold sheets. Then with the golden sheets, we can make our engineer's goggles. These are going to help us out tremendously when we start automating. Along with the create wrench. And I guess this means we sacrifice our helmet slot. Unless it maybe goes in one of the baubles. Mm, doesn't look like it. Okay, I guess we're rocking no armor for now then. <laughs> Alright, so some of these other tasks in this first quest we can skip for the time being. We want to get ore processing ASAP. Smelling all these ores to give us tiny, like, three nuggets at a time is no good. <laughs> but for now, we're going to want an encased fan. And as you can see now, we do have a little tooltip when we look at these create machines. It tells us this has zero SU, which I believe is stress units. Each machine can only take a certain amount of stress before it breaks. Uh, so I'm not super familiar with how that works, but I guess we'll figure it out soon enough. But yeah, to get our encased fan, we have to make a propeller. So for the ore processing setup, we obviously don't want to be using the hand cranks. I ideally, we want to be able to just put in any amount of ore that we have, and it will automatically give us the nuggets, or even better, the ingots. So to generate the rotational force that we're going to need, I think we're going to start with some water wheels. Three seems like a good enough number. Maybe a little overkill, but we'll have some for later on. So I also made up some gearboxes, which we'll talk about in a second. And I also made up a stone cutter. We're going to grab some andesite funnels from another one of our andesite machines. Alright, so I think we've got everything to start setting this thing up. We will just place it outside for now, as again, this is going to be a super temporary setup just to get us going. So we are going to start with the water wheel, which obviously is going to generate our rotational force. And we want the water to be flowing against the fins here. So we want, yeah, we want it flowing anti-clockwise, the way we have this placed. Let's just contain this water in with some trapdoors. So from here, we're going to place a vertical gearbox. Oh, this water's going to spill everywhere. <laughs> But what this will do is grab the energy from the middle of the water wheel and convert it so that it's spinning up. Then on top of this, we're going to place a cog wheel. And I guess we can put a trap door on this to stop the water. Blank there as well. Yeah, that should do it. So the cog wheel converted it to horizontal power, basically. And this is what we can use to power the millstone, which is what we throw our crushed ore into. Put a little hopper on top for the inputs. And so the outputs from this thing we can take from the bottom side, which is where the chute comes into it. So this chute basically acts as a dropper. It will automatically drop any items into the world. And this millstone, when we put crushed ore through, is going to give us the dust. So if we check the uses for the dust here, we want to bulk wash this with the encased fan. This also needs a water source in front of it. So we'll take the encased fan, put this on the side. And this has to receive rotational force from the back side here. So what we can do to grab this power here is to put another vertical gearbox. Two shafts on top of this. Then we can put another vertical gearbox on top of this cogwheel. We ought to spin this round with the wrench. That way. There we go. Shaft in between this. Then we want another gearbox on the side and a vertical one on top of this. 
sends the rotational force down and into the encased fan. Awesome. And it's blowing the way we want it. Basically this has two functions, I think it can also suck air in, but we want the dust to be flowing through the water source here and collected on this left hand side. So for the item collection, once it turns to nuggets, we're going to use a drawer for this and lock it. We don't have any access to create item filters I believe right now. And then on the drawer we can place a funnel, make sure the arrow is pointing into the drawer. And this basically just acts as a sideways hopper. There is no internal inventory in this, so if we lock this to say some iron nuggets, this will only allow iron nuggets through as this is it only has space for those items. Last thing we need here is a water source, and I think we can call this good actually. Let's make it daytime and we'll grab some ores to try this out. Gonna have to go mining again here, we don't really have that much left. I guess we'll crush down some of this uh, cinnabar, lead and nickel. So the cinnabar actually is our only source of redstone I believe at the moment. We don't find any redstone ore in the world. Instead we find this cinnabar ore, which gives us cinnabar from thermal series. And this thing we can crush in the same millstone. This was probably a bad first example since we don't actually need to wash this uh, cinnabar afterwards. Yeah, this mills straight into the redstone dust that we want. Or at least it should, it's taken its time here. We might be able to speed up this water wheel actually if we put a water source here. I don't know if that done anything. It doesn't look like it, I think we're still at 64 SU here. Aha, there we go, there's some redstone dust. We can actually lock this in the drawer and it should get picked up by the funnel. And we can toss in the lead and the nickel. I'm not sure exactly what we need this for, but I'm assuming we're going to need this sooner or later. But alright, I think this is uh, mission one accomplished here for the first goal that we had for today. So you might be asking yourself why we don't have a drawer controller here instead of just a 2x2 two two drawer so that we can hold more outputs. Well, that's not going to happen for a while, <laughs> as this takes zinc machines, uh, zinc casings. Well, the zinc casings is quite easy, but we also need inferno mechanisms, and this takes a sequenced assembly. Uh, to be honest, I'm not even really sure how we go about doing this. Liquid soul. I'm assuming this is some sort of nether resource, or oh, the weather. <laughs> Alright, this looks like fun, but not something we can get at the moment. So yeah, for now we can just make sure that we have uh, what we want to process locked in this drawer here. So yeah, I think we can call this first little create contraption a success. That obviously isn't going to be sufficient for us long term, but it's going to be enough to get us started. I think at this point though, we're going to grab some armor, some obsidian. And you might be wondering how we're able to mine this obsidian with just a stone tool. Since this is a tinker's stone pickaxe, we can actually add a diamond modifier to this. Meaning that we can still repair it with stone, even though we get the, the boost from the diamond. So we get a slight durability increase and also a speed increase on this. But these stone tools are not going to cut it for much longer, especially since we're doing underground base. We've got a lot of digging to do. <laughs> so, this is actually the first time I've been to the nether since the nether update, actually. I've always appreciated it in videos, but I've never actually seen it in person. This thing looks awesome. So much better than the old nether. Let's waypoint the portal here. And the thing we're here for actually is cobalt. I would really like to get some cobalt tools if that's possible. I'm hoping we can actually find some in here. We got some nether quartz, let's pick some of this up, could be useful. Yeah, I think this is one of those new nether structures that... Oh, those are guys are... those guys don't sound friendly. We are not prepared for this. <laughs> I don't think we want to fight with these guys yet. Is that our cobalt that we're looking for down there? I don't recognise the texture, but a lot of them have been changed. Ah, this is cobalt, nice. Oh man, this nether isn't very traversable these days, is it? I mean, it, <laughs> a lot easier than DJ too, I will say. So there is uh, quite a lot less cobalt than I would have hoped for, actually. All seems to be in these very, very treacherous locations, but uh, <laughs> I'm up for the risk. Let's not leave empty-handed. I don't hear any ghasts, so I think we're going to be safe here. Hello there. <laughs> Let's run. Let's run. There's far too many mobs in here now. Oh, they're, they're after me. <laughs> Bone blocks though, these could be nice. Oh, no ghast here. Alright, let's just get what we came here for and let's leave. <laughs> 15, is that going to be enough? I don't think. Let's grab a little bit more. <laughs> First death. The Enderman didn't like me looking at him too long. Alright, so for us to be able to make any tools with this cobalt, 
we are going to need some sort of melter. I don't think we have access to the smeltery controller yet. We, for this, we need rubber. But to get either of those things, we do need a lot of sand and gravel. And all of the sand, gravel, clay, we're going to make grout with. Two stacks? Should we go for... Yeah, sure, let's go for two stacks. All right, so to get this melter up and running, we need a seared tank for fuel. Melter on top. We're going to place a casting basin and... Oh, I guess that was the casting table and the casting basin. Two faucets on the side of the melter. And by the looks of the advancement, we've done this right. I'm just going off uh, what used to be in 112. But now if we put some lava in here, we should be able to melt our cobalt in here. Oh, and it looks like they buffed the speed on this. This used to be super slow. <laughs> yeah, we get four ingots of cobalt. And I was hoping to actually get a hammer here, but I think that is actually going to be locked behind the forge. Oh, no forge in this version. Um, <laughs> anvil, maybe? Yeah, anvil. Although, there doesn't look like there is... No iron anvil here. Hmm, maybe we'll have to pass up on this forge right now. We'll have to just settle with the, the weapons and tools that we can craft in this tinker station. So I think first thing we're going to make is actually a new sword. We can make these blank sand casts now, which is very fancy. And we're going to make a stone blade for this. And this thing I think we can put into the cast. And that turns it into a sword cast. And for the sword, we're actually not going to do cobalt. If we do a seared stone, it actually gives us, I think, one more extra attack damage. So a seared stone gives us 7.04. And cobalt only gives us 6.25. Although now we don't have enough free space. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, maybe we have to cast this out as nuggets first. You know what, let's use up the cobalt to make a pickaxe instead. We're going to go for a wooden tool binding though. And the reason we want that is for cultivated. This gives us extra durability whenever we repair this thing. Which will be nice, it means that we'll save on some cobalt. I'm going to also just put a diamond on here straight away just to give it some more mining speed. And you know what, I think we'll actually just go for the full cobalt sword here. The seared stone doesn't for some reason give us any extra attack damage. So we'll settle for 6.25 and 900 durability on this thing. Alright, we got a bit more offense now, and this mining speed is a little bit more bearable to work with. It's unfortunate that we couldn't get access to the hammer at this point, but I guess we'll we'll look into that next episode, I think. And we have some extra seared bricks for when we get the smeltery. Yeah, this old pickaxe that we had didn't live very long, but it served us well. <laughs> but for now, I think we're going to automate a tree farm. So the tree farm I'd like to build for two reasons. The first one being that, well, we need it a lot in crafting materials. And for the base design I have in mind, we're going to be using a lot of dark oak wood. The trouble is we don't have any dark oak wood right now. So let's maybe do a little bit of exploring just to see if we can find any of these trees. I think all of this stuff down here is spruce. Maybe up to the north here is going to contain some, which is this way. Lots of these cherry trees about. These things look really, really nice. Not something that would fit in with the base design I have in mind though. So I guess we keep looking here. Oh, cool. Look at this little tent. Got some barrels, a sack, campfire, I guess we take this. Yeah, we are all the way over here to the north. Still no dark oak in sight though. Decided to risk another one of these uh, rail cart mine shafts. Hopefully no mishaps like the last time. <laughs> 15 emeralds, wow. Yeah, I'm not used to Minecraft being this generous to me. <laughs> we take it all though. So uh, don't ask me why I'm underground looking for dark oak, <laughs> but we found a dungeon here. We got a skeleton spawner here, could be useful for later on. Jungle trees though, we'll make sure to grab a sapling from this, and also cocoa beans. Don't you just love when the creepers get you 2,000 blocks away from your base? Yeah, this is, a <laughs> this is a long trip. I'm glad this isn't a hardcore series anyway. Alright, we got our things back. Let's find this dark oak. <laughs> I should maybe also mention in this video here that a lot of you guys expected to see a different horizon here. Don't worry, just because we're playing 116 doesn't mean that we've, uh, we, we're never going to play the older packs again. 
Oh, what is that thing? Is that another one of those dungeons, maybe? I'm getting distracted a lot. We, <laughs> we really have to find this Dark Oak to get this tree farm up. Ending book? Alright. <laughs> I'll take this. Oh man, inventory is getting so full here, though. <gasps> oh my goodness, look what it is. We got the Dark Oak. Alright, let's get some saplings and get this tree farm up and running. Alright, we made it back to our base here. Uh, we picked up some interesting items along the way, actually. Our uh, storage solution needs addressing, but <laughs> let's get on to building this tree farm first. So there's a few things extra we have to craft for this. We did pick up some radial chassis. We're going to need a few more of these things. And I seem to have misplaced the extra machines that we had. Yeah, this is what happens when you don't organize. <laughs> oh, you know what? I bet I left them in that chest over there. Yep. <laughs> well, we're going to have to make up some more anyways. Guys, look at what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> no way this is dark oak orange autumn oh i feel so silly right now <laughs> well we got a lot of decent stuff from that exploration trip anyway and we're still going to build the tree farm uh, maybe we'll end up farming these orange autumns instead <laughs> oh that's hilarious you know what, the trip wasn't totally a waste because we can uh, knock out our second goal or third goal for today which is to get some food. And we can grab the apples actually from these trees. So that was a totally calculated move right there. <laughs> so I've started crafting up some of the things we're going to need. Uh, I think in this chest. Yeah, we have our radio chassis, the chutes, some more funnels. We're going to need some of these saws to cut the trees. I think we're going to start off with five of these. So I made up some more andesite machines. And to make these saws, we need saw blades, which takes a hefty amount of iron at this stage. Plus some lead, which is, I guess, what the lead is going to be used for. We do also have to smash up some more iron into the plates. Oh yeah, this takes a decent amount of hunger off you as well. Look at that. <laughs> we should really get this automated actually. Anyways, there's our five saw blades. Then combine these in the smithing table to give us our five mechanical saws. Which I think was also one of the quests, the first quest that we had to do. Also, you want to know another fail of this episode? We, uh, <laughs> we have the nature's compass in this pack. Oops. <laughs> Anyways, all this gold that we found at the bottom of the ocean is going to come in handy. We also need some deployers to plant the saplings, which takes three gold sheets per. And we turn these into the deployers. Last things we'll need is one more encased fan. I want to actually try to use this to generate our rotational force. I was originally going to use the windmills, but I saw this function on the ponder screen that we can actually use this to generate force if we provide a heat source below this. So I did actually loot some campfires somewhere from the, all those tents. I don't, I really don't like being this disorganized, but the start of next episode, we're going to start on our base. I'd really like to avoid uh, placing any more temporary things. Although that said, the tree farm is going to go out there for the time being. <laughs> so we're actually out of wood to build the last machine casing that we need. If we actually place the mechanical saw next to a tree here, we can actually hand crank this. Check this out. <laughs> How awesome is that? So this is what we're going to be using to automate the tree farm. But it is a really cheap early game way to uh, cut forests down basically. I do have to learn how to place these correctly. I think it may be a shift click. Oh yeah, that's so much easier than using this matic. Yeah, shift click places it the correct way. Also, this wasn't here before was it? Random anymore? I'm sure that used to be behind this barrel. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like it's moved on its own. And we got a direct brick wall. Okay. <laughs> That's a fun ore. Alright, anyways, the last thing we're going to need is some linear chassis. I think, yeah, I think one more craft. Alright, so I think we now have everything that we're going to need for this. First of all, I want to test out this encased fan. So this has to be lowered into the ground slightly. Uh, we want a mechanical bearing here. Then underneath the bearing, we want the encased fan. I think the bearing takes power from below, right? Yeah, rotation from below. And the encased fan, we, yeah, we want pointing downwards. So if we now place a campfire on this, this provides a heat. We also need to give this a redstone signal. Did that do anything? Um, <laughs> wait a sec, is this actually spinning? It is spinning, okay. So the idea with this farm is we're going to have some radial chassis in the middle here. And the rotation from this fan is going to spin the bearing, which will spin the chassis. Then connected to the chassis, we can connect up some linear chassis. Then in front of these things, actually, wait, which way is this going to be spinning? I think we want them on this side. We'll place down our saws. 
So this is going to spin round in a circle and cut the trees in front of it. Then we're going to want a way to plant the saplings, right? So for that, I think we can use the ployers. And these we're going to place behind the saws, uh, pointing down. Yeah, just like that. You know what, let's make sure this actually spins the right way before we do anything else. Ah, yeah, this is our first problem right here. So, I think there's something called glue. Yeah, super glue. Very easy to make. We actually picked up some slime from uh, some of the tinkers spawning slime islands. I mean, I guess they're not slime islands anymore, but <laughs> no longer do you have to pillar up for those things. Yeah, see, the game's given me more reason to uh, justify that trip we made for the <laughs> for Dark Oak. <laughs> So yeah, I think we want to glue these chassis together. And we can do that by putting some on the radio chassis. We'll need one on this one as well. So now I think if we plug these in, or plug these in, <laughs> you know what I mean. Flip the lever. Yeah, this is exactly what we're after. Nice. Okay, we're not quite done yet though. We need somewhere for the items to be placed. So whenever we uh, cut the tree manually here, it actually f toppled over and dropped all the items on the floor. However, I believe these mechanical saws, when you have them on the linear chassis, I'm not actually sure how the game checks it, but in my uh, creative testing world, so long as we have a chest glued to this, uh, I think we'll put it on top here actually. If we glue a chest to the top of this, any tree that gets cut will uh, empty its inventory into this chest, and then all we need to do is interface to this to collect the drops. And the way that we're going to interface with these things is by using a portable storage interface. Oh, it actually gives us two, nice. So if we check the ponder screen for this thing, yeah, this is a very similar setup to what we have. Whenever this is rotating, we can't access the chest ourselves. But if we place two interfaces next to each other, whenever it rotates, it will actually join up and uh, transfer the items between them. And I think this works both ways. We can uh, insert and extract from this thing. Before this thing can work though, we also have to filter these deployers. So there is a filter here. You can tell this to plant only dark oak saplings. That way it doesn't try to place the wood that's in this chest or something. Yeah, they can they can interact in multiple ways, even through blocks actually. Yeah, these things have many different functions here. Very, very versatile item it looks like. But in this case we want it to plant the saplings. But before we turn this on, let's also hook up the storage interface. So this we also want to glue on the side. And then I'm not sure if it's a one block space or if we just place the other one like this. I think maybe there has to be a space in between. And then I think from here we can shoot into a chest. I'm not sure if this specifically will work, but uh, let's give this a go. Okay, first step successful, we planted our saplings. Although, it's not going to work with this little. <laughs> we did pick up a lot of bone blocks from the nether though. So we have a hefty amount of bone meal we can kickstart this with. Let's just bone meal these trees just to test this out. Okay, hopefully when it gets to here it's going to cut the tree, put the items in the chest, and then interface and drop it in this chest. That is the goal. I think when it cuts the last block, the full tree should should fall. It's actually a lot faster than I thought it would be, even with this uh, this encased fan to power it. Storage interfaces connect together, and we got the items in the chest. Awesome! <laughs> yeah, the deployer should use the items in the chest to refill this farm with saplings. I'm gonna just bone meal a bunch of these trees just to get this going. And in theory, we could actually farm any sort of tree. We could probably even mix it up if we uh, filter the deployers to plant different saplings. But yeah, this is this is so cool. <laughs> I'm already addicted to this. Yeah, look at all this stuff. Easy, easy dark oak wood. And we're getting our apples from this. So we now have a food source. We have our tree farm. We have a basic ore processing system. And we also have some tools. So I think we've actually achieved all we set out to do today. Although things are still very messy in there. <laughs> Which is something that, yeah, we're going to start next episode with. The plan for this base, by the way, is to uh, have some grand entrance here. We may have some things out the front here like this, but um, I mainly just wanted to get use this space to get the base started. Uh, I'm still learning, but uh, I'm having so much fun with this already. <laughs> so one of the last things I'd like to look into today is to grab one of these backpacks. We're going to have to go mining. I think I'm going to do that between episodes. And having an extra 18 slots in our inventory is going to be very, very helpful. To get the backpack, though, we're going to need some leather. So I think I'm going to grab some cows. I, I'm sure I've seen some over there to the south. Come on cows, follow me. <laughs> You're going to a happy place, don't worry. Watch out for those saws. <laughs> Almost there. Nice. Looks like for this recipe for the bound leather, 
We also need some sewn spools, which are actually quite easy to make. Only we, th that was the last two string we had. However, we can't actually mill this wool that we have. Yeah, this should mill into string for us. Unfortunately, it's only one to one, I believe. But we have a sheep farm, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice, we're getting our string. All right, we got enough leather to get the five bound leather we need for the backpack. Combine this in the sewing table with three white wool, and we have our backpack. Yeah, nice, we got we got a full 18 slots from this, and I think I noticed here there's also some upgrade kits we can make. It looks like there is also a bobble slot this fits into. And is there a keybind for this? Yes, there is, it's B, nice. <laughs> so this, this should make mining a lot more efficient. But yeah, I think with that, this is a good point to wrap up episode one. Next episode, as I mentioned, we're going to start on the building and hopefully we'll get around to some more create contraptions. If you guys have any pointers, I'm more than happy to hear about those in the comments, so uh, leave them below. No doubt I uh, failed on some other things today, <laughs> but yeah, I'm having so much fun. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for some more Create Above and Beyond. <laughs>